test is number one, the title of her oration, The Powerful Constitution. As I prepared my speech, I asked my little sister Carolina what she knew about the Constitution. She told me that through her seventh grade civics class, she learned that the Constitution was created at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. And it was written by James Madison, the father of our Constitution. As she continued to retrieve facts from her memory, I was so proud of her. My little sister, who bears a learning disability, is knowledgeable on our nation's most important document. My curiosity grew, and I asked my parents what they knew about the Constitution. <coughs> they told me that the Constitution outlined the three main branches of government and their separation of powers. In Article One, the legislative branch is outlined, which consists of Congress. 438 representatives and 100 senators. In Article 2, the executive branch is outlined, which consists of presidents and their duties and responsibilities. In Article 3, the judicial branch is outlined, which consists of the Supreme Court and the federal courts. It is also the shortest written portion of the three main branches. My mother, being from Mexico, and my father, being from Colombia, told me that in their countries, the American Constitution is deeply studied and well respected. My family of immigrants was able to tell me more about the Constitution and show it more love and appreciation than those in my AP government class when I asked them the same thing <coughs> question, what do you know about the Constitution? Written in 1787, ratified in 1788, and in operation since 1789, the United States Constitution is the world's longest surviving written charter of government. Its first three words, we the people, affirm that the United States exists to serve its citizens. For over 200 years, the United States Constitution has stood firm because its framers separated and balanced governing principles in order to safeguard issues such as majority rule and minority rights, liberty and equality, and the federal and state governments. The United States Constitution has evolved through amendments in order to meet the needs of a nation now profoundly different from the 18th century world in which the creators lived. This vital and living document has been strengthened through amendments, serving as both guide and protector to the American people and their elected officials. The United States Constitution has survived civil war, <coughs> economic depressions, assassination, and terrorist attacks. In order to remain a source of wisdom and inspiration for all of us. The creation of the Constitution depended upon the knowledge, experience, and dedication of its framers, just as its endurance depends upon the knowledge and experience of each succeeding generation of Americans. For this reason, it is important for us to learn and understand governing principles set forth by the Constitution. This vital and living document is referred to as a living and breathing Constitution because it is open to constant change. Change by ratification of a new amendment or repealing of an existing amendment. Consequently, as time goes on and new issues and concerns arise, the United States Constitution can be changed in order to meet the needs of the present and the future. Additionally, the United States Constitution is constantly interpreted by the Supreme Court. Hence, abortion and automatic weapons were not issued in the conception of the Constitution over 200 years ago. But through constant interpretation by the Supreme Court, protections or restrictions can be given on a variety of issues. 
our government has understood the importance in educating its citizens on our Constitution. According to the United States Senate, Congress established Constitution in 1956 in order to encourage all Americans to learn more about the Constitution. It was set forth to begin each year on September 17th, a date in which in 1789 the delegates to the convention signed the Constitution. In 2004, Senator Robert C. Byrd of West Virginia included key provisions in the Consolidated Appropriations Act of fiscal year 2005, designating September 17th of each year as Constitution Day, requiring public schools and governmental offices to provide educational programs in order to promote a better understanding of our Constitution. Now, let's put it into perspective. <coughs> Great Britain's Constitution is not codified on one document, but it is embodied in many documents, such as treaties, court judgments, and statutes. While the American Constitution is very difficult to change, Great Britain's Constitution can be changed by only a simple majority. Now, there have been a large number of constitutional reforms in Great Britain in recent times, many of which have occurred on a piecemeal basis and without any formal public debate on the long-term implications of such changes or considerations of other elements of the Constitution. <coughs> While we would never think of complete constitutional reform in Great Britain, constitutional reform is high on the political agenda and it is promised by each of the manifestos of the three main political parties. Because of our American Constitution, we do not live under the rule of a king or queen. Our American Constitution protects us in whatever we have to do. It currently protects our right to assemble and my right to speak. Now, it is in our culture not to talk about politics or our own ideology. We avoid arguments and insults to steering clear of politics. <coughs> However, it is important that we as grandparents, parents, mentors, and Americans educate others in our government and in our Constitution. In a world where television is the main source of information, we cannot rely this sole responsibility on television shows educational programs for teachers. Help me start a national conversation. Tell your children, educate your grandchildren. Tell all Americans, young and old, about this amazing document. Not just on September 17th, Constitution Day, but every day. America, what do you know about the Constitution? Now, it seems as though we forget to take pride in our Constitution. <coughs> a document that has led our nation and only consists of 4,400 words. It is the oldest and longest written constitution of any major government in the world, and it only took 100 days to print. Take pride in the fact that of the 55 delegates to the convention, only 50 were Revolutionary War veterans. Take pride in the fact that our Constitution has led our nation into becoming a world power in science, military, and finance. Take pride in what makes you American. Our soldiers, <coughs> our success, our Constitution. For contestant number one, eight minutes, 58 seconds, no penalty.
Contestant number one, your assigned topic. Let me speak. Let me be heard. Allow me to pray. And allow me to serve. For I am an American. And not my government, nor you, can silence my words. But what if government could? What if Congress passes a bill that enforces us all to convert to Christianity, Buddhism, or Islam? I would not be able to pray to my deity. I would not be able to follow my rosary. I would not be able to rejoice in the hymns of my Lord. This is not what America stands for. A bill such as this could not withstand itself to the enforcement and utmost power of our Constitution. However, a bill such as this has presented itself in front of our democracy. The latest controversial debates have existed on allowing prayer in classrooms, displaying the Ten Commandments or the Lord's Prayer in public schools, and many want to teach creationism instead of the theory of evolution. Whether you agree or disagree with religious education in public schools, one voice is louder and stands stronger than the popular culture. It is the living and breathing constitution that must continue to be honored. In March of 1789, most of our founding fathers were proud of the document they had created. They lifted their heads high in satisfaction of its holdings. But of the 55 delegates to the convention, only 39 actually signed the Constitution. Edmund Randolph and George Mason of Virginia and Elbridge Gerry of Massachusetts refused to sign the Constitution, due in part to a lack of a Bill of Rights. These men understood that if our rights were not protected, then the people might as well have no rights at all. At this time, James Madison, who eventually became the fourth president of the United States, opposed the Bill of Rights. He addressed the Bill of Rights as parchment barriers, which only offered an illusion to protection against tyranny. James Wilson, a founding father and a past Supreme Court justice argued that to enumerate the rights of the people would have been dangerous because it would have implied that the rights not specifically mentioned in the original Constitution did not exist. As we fast forward into 2014, a well-known American attorney, Francis Lee Bailey, once wrote that he did not seriously believe that the Bill of Rights or this First Amendment could get through Congress today. In fact, it couldn't <coughs> even make it out of committee. Today, almost 227 years since the Constitution's original ratification, I cannot begin to fathom our nation without the securities provided by the Bill of Rights. Our founding fathers persevered in writing the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights that in its First Amendment reads, that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech. Debates, arguments, and challenges will continue to present themselves in front of our invaluable Constitution and this First Amendment. But it is the strength, respect, and faith that we Americans invoke into our Constitution that keeps it alive and strong. In this nation, may God bless America is not a question. To declare, may God bless America is a right protected for you and protected for me. So let me speak. Let me be heard. Allow me to pray and allow me to serve. For I am an American. For we are Americans. And our government cannot take that away. Thank you. <coughs> now for 
contestant number one, four minutes, 33 seconds, no penalties. 